Hey friends, this is Malka Asad and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to provide you with a quick overview over the CCS cases of the USMLE Step 3 exam. I wanted to make this video because the CCS cases are a unique uh, feature of the USMLE Step 3. We've been used to the multiple choice questions in the Step 1, Step 2, CK, and there is a big portion of the Step 3 that is MCQ questions but the CCS cases are only present in the USMLE Step 3 and I wanted to provide you with this quick overview so I hope this can make your preparation for this exam way easier. I'm gonna start by showing you the platform, how it works, just a two minute uh, quick overview of that platform and then I'm gonna show you how you can approach these cases, how do you start with the physical exam, how do you uh, go to order some diagnostic tests, what are the most common ones, treatment, counseling, so it's just a quick overview of the majority of the uh, diagnostic tests and the treatment options with the counseling. And then at the end, I'm going to show you a real life situation where you, where I can go on the platform, solve the case with you and show you how it's done. I'm going to divide this video in sections. So at any time you can skip to the next uh, portion. The timestamps will be in the description below and you can also see them on the line of the video. So if you're familiar with one part and you want to go to the next, you can just click on the next timestamp or the next portion of the video. So let's get started. So when you first open the case, you will be presented with the case introduction, which is a summary of what the patient is presenting with. And then after you click OK, you will get the initial vital signs. And then after you click OK, you'll get the history. So that will include the history of presenting illness, the past medical history, family history, uh, social history, and review of systems. After you click OK, you'll have the platform of this software. So the first one is the interval history or physical examination. Through this, you can order the different physical exams. So you can order one or all, it depends on what the patient needs, and then there is the orders. From this tab, you can order medications, you can order uh, imaging, whatever you wanna order for the patient, you can do that through here by clicking on the order uh, box here. And you can check through the progress notes, the vital signs, lab reports, imaging, the results of these tests that you ordered. So after you order a test, you'll usually have to wait, but in order to avoid waiting, you can just go to this clock here and either choose, I want to reevaluate the case on a specific time or in 30 minutes, one hour, for example, if you click on N or with next available results. So let's say you ordered a chest X-ray and the chest X-ray will be ready in five or 10 minutes. And once you click on this, it will jump to the next available test result that you ordered or call me uh, whenever needed. This clock here represent the time uh, per the simulation case. So if the patient presented at 11 a.m. and you ordered, let's say, chest X-ray and you advanced the clock one hour, this will advance to uh, 12. So this represent the time for the simulation case, not the time, uh, the actual time that we're in. And finally, this is the location. I'll talk about that more in detail at the end of the video. But uh, the location, it could be either the office, emergency department, ICU, inpatient, or home. And you can change that based on what the patient needs by just clicking on one of them and the patient will be transferred there. So this is just a quick summary of the platform before we dive in the details of the CCS cases. The exam generally is composed of several components, the first of which is the physical exam then you're supposed to order some type of diagnostic tests, labs, imaging, some give some treatment, uh, monitor the patient, counsel the patient, and change the location depending on the situation. Generally, after you're presented with the three pieces of information, you have to decide whether you wanna go to do a physical exam or whether the patient needs some emergency orders. What do I mean by emergency orders? Let's say a patient presents with severe chest pain. One of the differential diagnoses for chest pain is myocardial infarction. So in this situation, this is a life-threatening situation and you have to do some emergency orders before you do a physical exam. What are the common emergency orders? Something like oxygen, oxygen oximetry, the blood pressure monitoring, cardiac monitoring, uh, ECG, 
uh, IV access, normal saline. So all of these could be uh, requested before you do a physical exam. And they will change, they, they are even more. Sometimes you might order a glucose test or give glucose depending on the situation. So this is not everything, but these are the most common ones that you might need to give to the patient before you do a physical exam. If the patient is not in a life-threatening situation, you might go directly to do a physical exam. And you have to decide whether you wanna do a full physical exam or a focused physical exam. Because as I've shown you in the platform, you have to pick what type of uh, physical examination you wanna do and you have to tailor the physical exam based on the situation. When do you order a full physical exam versus a focused physical exam? If you're in an outpatient setting and the patient is not suffering from pain, shortness of breath, you might go and order a full physical exam. But let's say a present, patient is presenting with severe abdominal pain. The patient is not unstable uh, to, to, for us to order emergency order before the physical exam, but the patient is in pain. And every minute you spend to do uh, a portion of the physical exam that is not needed, you're delaying treatment for the patient. So in these situations, you do a focused physical exam. So instead of doing the whole uh, physical exam, you choose to do the physical exam portions that are related to the case. And you can always come back later and do uh, the other parts that you, you skipped, but you should focus on doing the, the main ones that are related to the case, starting treatment, starting ordering some uh, some diagnostic tests for the patient and you can do the rest of the exam later. So at the beginning of the case, you start either with emergency orders if the patient is suffering from severe chest pain or the patient is unstable, the patient is unconscious, or you go directly to the physical exam if the patient is stable and is not suffering from a life-threatening situation. For the physical exam, you have to choose either to do a focused exam if the patient is suffering from pain or shortness of breath, or do a full physical exam if the patient is not suffering from any of these. After the physical exam, you have to decide whether the location is appropriate for the patient situation. Generally, patients either present to the office or the emergency department. If the patient is in the emergency department, you can continue uh, to order the tests in the emergency department. But if the patient is in the office, and is suffering from a problem that requires transfer to the ER, you might consider transferring the patient even before you order diagnostic tests. But that's not always the case. Sometimes you order some tests and you find out that the patient requires to be transferred to the ER and you can transfer the patient after you order the test. But sometimes just from the physical exam, you find out that this is a life-threatening situation that needs to be uh, managed in the emergency department. So make sure that the location is appropriate and then you can start with the diagnostic tests, labs and imaging. Then you'll order some diagnostic tests, some labs. For example, you can order CBC, uh, basal metabolic panel, BMP, liver function tests, TSH. You can order some tests related to the urine, for example, urine analysis, urine culture, uh, urine toxicology screen, uh, fecal or cold blood test, ovaparicide, depending on the situation. If a patient has infection, can order blood cultures, CSF analysis, synovial fluid analysis, sputum culture, gram stain. It all depends on what the patient is presenting with. After you decide what is the required uh, diagnostic tests, order some imaging if the patient needs. Again, each case is, is unique and different, and you have to tailor the, the diagnostic tests depending on that. Imaging common ones are x-rays depending on the location, uh, for example, you can do X-ray to the chest, to the pelvis, abdomen. Uh, imaging also includes the MRI, CT scan, um, ultrasound or echocardiography. Uh, patients, uh, female patients uh, of childbearing age, uh, you can also order the beta HCG. This is a very important test that uh, can change the whole differential diagnosis if you miss it. And or also the treatment, sometimes even if the patient presenting with UTI, and the patient turns out to be a pregnant patient, you will change the treatment uh, options based on whether the patient is pregnant or not. After you order your diagnostic tests and imaging, you can decide whether the patient needs symptom management. So if the patient is suffering from pain, you can give them some morphine, NSAIDs, acetaminophen. If the patient has nausea, you, you can give them Zofran. If the patient has diarrhea, you can give them Lopiramid, but again, depends on the case. Some cases uh, require symptom management later, some patients require uh, symptom management uh, at the beginning of the case. So this is the first round of orders. At the first round, you order diagnostic tests, 
sometimes you require symptom management, and sometimes even you re you require to order treatment options at the at the first round of orders. So if a patient, for example, is presenting with uh, bacterial meningitis, you are not supposed to wait the lumbar puncture, for example, results until you you start ordering the anti antibacterial uh, agents. So in, it depends on the case. Sometimes you need to wait the result of the diagnostic tests to start ordering treatment options. Sometimes you order treatment options right away, depending on the severity of the case. Also, the location will vary based on the severity of the case. So if the patient is presenting with a severe case, you have to wait the results of the diagnostic tests while the patient is in the emergency department. So in this case, you're not supposed to discharge the patient and wait for, for the result. If the patient is presenting with a non-severe, non-acute case, you can send the patient home and while the diagnostic results come back, you, you have already scheduled a, a follow-up for the patient and you can discuss all these results at one point in time, a week, for example, after the first presentation. Also, another important point is that the severity of the case will decide whether you have to, or, to order the diagnostic tests and imaging immediately, stat, or routine. If the patient is presenting with a severe case, if the patient is in the emergency department, you're likely to order these diagnostic tests as stat. If the patient is presenting as outpatient in the office, you can send the patient home, schedule a follow-up, and when the patient comes back for the follow-up, you can discuss the results of all these diagnostic tests, which come, come uh, through as the patient is waiting for the next follow-up. So again, you start with diagnostic tests, imaging. Sometimes you need to manage some symptoms even before you get the results back. Sometimes you need to start ordering some treatment options before you get the results back. Sometimes you need to wait. So you get the results and you decide based on the results of the CT scan, the results of the, the labs that you ordered, which treatment options you want to pursue. Also, the location will vary. If you're presenting with a severe case, life-threatening situation, you will order the diagnostic tests as stat, and you will keep the patient in the emergency department or inpatient while you get the results of these tests. If the patient is in a less severe situation, chronic situation, you can send them home and uh, discuss the results of the, these diagnostic tests when they come back for their follow-up. One of the options in the exam is if the patient is in the emergency department or in the office and needs admission to the hospital, you have two options, either to admit the patient to the general ward or to admit them to the ICU. And there would be a set of orders that you have to order when you admit the patient. For example, the diet, will the patient be MPO? Will the patient uh, have clear diet, advanced diet, uh, or just regular diet? Will the patient be able to ambulate at will? Uh, bed rest with bathroom privileges or complete bed rest. The IV access if a patient needs one, the fluids, you have to monitor these fluids. Generally, there is a set vital signs for the ICU and for the inpatient ward, but do you want to change that or this is acceptable for the, for the situation? So just be careful of all these aspects whenever you admit a patient to the hospital. Monitoring is another important part of this exam because each case will have to be monitored in somehow, either a physical exam or diagnostic tests or vital signs. And this applies both to inpatient and outpatients. So let's say the patient is in the hospital, emergency department or admitted. You have to check regularly on their vital signs to if the case uh, is uh, related to chest pain, you might need to check their ECG, uh, their blood pressure. If, a, if it's a COPD exacerbation, you might need to check their oxygen. So each case will require a specific set of monitoring tools that you have to check regularly. Also physical exam. So when, whenever a patient is in the hospital or uh, come back for follow-up, you have to make sure that nothing new happened and you don't have to repeat the whole physical exam. You can order just the internal follow-up and pick one or two of the physical exams to, to check that the patient is still doing well or nothing has changed. You can also order some diagnostic tests as part of the monitoring. For example, if a patient is anemic, you can order a CBC or hemoglobin and hematocrit. If a patient is presenting with rheumatoid arthritis or SLE, you can monitor the progress with ESR or RF or ANA or anti-DS DNA. So it depends on the case, what the patient is presenting with and the type of case that you order some 
uh, set of monitoring tools to make sure that the patient is not progressing. Now I wanna move on to treatment. As I mentioned previously, treatment could be ordered at the same time of diagnostic tests, or you can weigh the results of these tests and order the treatment based on that. There are so many types of treatment options. I'm not gonna go into the details of that. Only one specific part that I wanna go into is surgery. Uh, surgery is one of the treatment options available in this exam and uh, what I wanted to go into is the preoperative tests that you do prior to surgery. So for each surgical patients, you generally order a surgical consult, consult with the team that usually manages these type of cases. For example, if you're doing a cholecystectomy or appendectomy, order a surgical consult with the general surgery team and they will ask you what is the reason for this consult and you type appendicitis or cholecystitis requiring cholecystectomy. So the surgical consult is one of the things that you have to order prior to surgery. Uh, you have to make the patient's MPO, order IV access if the patient doesn't have that yet, uh, normal saline if needed. Uh, generally, you require preoperative antibiotics and cefazolin is one of these antibiotics used for uh, preoperative surgery. You can also order blood type and cross match in case the patient needed transfusion and coagulation studies such as PTINR and PTT. As I mentioned the case, if needed, you can order consults while managing the case. For example, if you are presented with a case that requires genetic consult, you can order that. If you are ordering surgery, you have to order a consult with the surgical team. So if needed, you can just type the type of consult you want and uh, and order it routine or stat based on the case. And while you're managing the case, you'll go back and forth between diagnostic tests, treatment, you might order a diagnostic test, treatment option, and then another diagnostic test. So you go back and forth between these options based on the case. So it's not uh, you order diagnostic tests and then treatment and then it gets resolved. You have to go back and forth like a real life situation. And as I mentioned, you have to monitor the patients uh, based on the case. You might order oxygen, uh, CBC, uh, physical exam, regular physical exam. So the case has to go back and forth between monitoring tests and uh, treatment based on the case. And finally, counseling. There are many counseling options such as stop smoking, uh, limit alcohol, safe sex, contraception. Uh, you can order counseling regarding the, the case itself. So you counsel the patient about the disease, about the cancer diagnosis, HIV, medication adherence, medication side effects. At the end of this case, you will have two minutes in which you order the final diagnostic tests and treatment options. The case in the exam does not always uh, ends with the patient's recovering, even if you're ordering the right diagnostic tests and right treatment options. So you might manage the patient, order surgery, and the case ends abruptly. That doesn't mean that you're not managing the patient correctly. It just means that the case ended and they give you at the end of the case two minutes in which you can order the final labs, imaging, treatment, and uh, counseling. So if there is still something that needs to be ordered, you can type that at the end of the case in these two minutes. If there is nothing, you can just leave it blank and go to the next case. Always remember that for each case, there are few things that are extremely important and should not be missed. For example, in the case of bacterial meningitis, you should not miss a lumbar puncture or antibiotics. So you might miss a few things here and there from counseling, from diagnostic that are not extremely uh, important and not extremely related to the case, but always remember and focus on these few things that would make a difference in diagnosis and the prognosis of the disease. Now moving on to the third part of this video in which I'm gonna show you a case as it shows in the exam. This platform is downloadable from the MBME website, from the USMLE website, and I'll put the link for that in the description below. In the exam, you'll be uh, shown this screen here. There are two types of cases, one that starts with 10 minutes, eight minutes of uh, you solving the case and 10 minutes at the end of the case, and the 20 minutes ones would be 18 minutes plus two minutes. So you either have 10 minutes total or 20 minutes total. The time in the 20 minutes cases is more than enough. However, in the 10 minute cases, it might be a little bit short. So you have to be quick in, the, uh, in how you order tests and how you manage the patients. So after you uh, get shown this, this screen, you can click on start case and the case will start. You'll be shown three screens that gives you information about the patient. 
The first one is the case introduction. So you can see here that the patient is 32 year old uh, African American female presenting with pain and swelling of her knees. So we can click on OK and then you'll get the vital signs and then the history. So for reading this history, this patient is 32, increasing fatigue and generalized weakness. By reading the history, you start thinking of differential diagnosis and things you can order. Me thinking of differential for fatigue, I can think of cancer, inflammatory diseases, infections. And as, as I go forward with the case, I, I narrow my, my differential. So here you can see that this has been going on for four months. In the past eight weeks, the patient has aches, joint stiffness, mainly in the morning. So here you start thinking more of SLE, rheumatoid arthritis, or other types of inflammatory arthritis. So stiffness lasts for one to two hours, makes it difficult to, to send the older children off to school. Uh, she has intermittent swelling of the wrist. So you can continue reading this history. It, this is the main information that the patient has pain and stiffness in the joints. There is also the past medical, family history. Social history is very important, especially the personal habits when you want to counsel patients regarding alcohol or smoking or drugs, and you can see the review of systems. So after you click OK, you'll start orders, physical exam, whatever you want to order for the patient. So as I mentioned in the second part of this video, here you had to decide based on the initial history whether this is an emergent case that needs more, that needs an emergent orders such as oxygen, uh, IV access, cardiac monitoring, ECG, or you can start with the physical exam. Since this is uh, a chronic case, the patient is presenting to the office, nothing life-threatening, you can go with the history. You can go, sorry, with the physical exam. And as I mentioned before, you can either order a focused physical exam if the patient is in distress or suffering from pain, or you can uh, do the full physical exam. The full physical exam has the advantage of showing you things that might uh, not be obvious from the history. Let's say the patient has something that uh, did not tell you about. So this is, can show if you do the full physical exam. If the patient is not in pain, I recommend doing the full physical exam. So you can click on all these. And once you click OK, it will tell you the total amount of time that is required for phys physical exam. So you can imagine this will take around 15 minutes. If the patient is in pain, that's a lot of time to keep the patient suffering. So you either give them pain medication before you do the physical exam or you minimize the physical exams to the ones that you really need. In this case, for example, if I want to do one or two physical uh, examination, I would definitely do the extremity one because this is what the patient is presenting with and the general one. So after you click OK, it will show you the physical exam findings. So again, you can practice with this case. It's available online and you can read the physical exam findings. I want to focus on the extremity. You can see bilateral swelling, warmth, tenderness, mainly in the metacarpal uh, joints, metacarpal phalangeal and the knee joints. If it was in the distal, in the DIP joint, you, you tend more towards the osteoarthritis. You know, the uh, rheumatoid arthritis does not tend to uh, affect the DIP joints. So there are uh, a wide uh, variety of differential diagnosis for this case. And your, your uh, lab test that you will order, your imaging, every diagnostic test should help you to narrow this down. You have to be focused here that this is the elapsed time. As I said, this case is total of 20 minutes. So you have uh, 18 minutes to do the uh, your part of the case and the last two minutes you can order whatever if is left or if you already finished everything, you don't have to order anything. But you have to focus here that you don't go over the 70 minutes and you have to be quick. I chose this case specifically because it gives us 20 minutes so it gives me time to explain some of the rationale for the orders I'll order. So after you order physical exam, nothing life threatening, you can go to the orders. Here you can see the order sheet, progress note, vital signs. So the things that you've ordered, you can see them here. Sometimes when you click on lab, lab reports, you don't see the order and you ask yourself, how can I order? You have to go back to order sheet. So you can click on orders. You can 
order multiple things at the same time so you don't have to go back and forth every time. So I usually order CBC, BMP for all patients. The, the, the exam will probably decrease points if you order invasive tests such as biopsy if it's not needed. But if you order CBC, BMP, it's not gonna, it might not be helpful, but it will probably not decrease your points if you order it. But it might show you things that you might miss. I'm gonna order TCH since the patient is present with fatigue, also liver function tests, or uh, rheumatoid factor, ANA, ESR, CCP, CRP, X-ray of the knee joint, arthrocentesis, synovial fluid analysis. So I type sometimes the beginning of the word and it will, once you click confirm orders, it will correct it by itself. So once you click, okay, you can, you have to click confirm orders. So it asks you for frequency. This is important for cases that require monitoring. So for example, if you have a patient with anemia and you want to monitor their hemoglobin, hematocrit, or WBC, their blood counts, you can order every four hours, every eight hours, depending on the case. But for our case, it's uh, outpatient. So we'll probably order it only once. So just keep it on frequency zero. In your world, you'll see that it will ask you stat versus routine in the platform of the exam and the one downloadable from the USMLE website, you don't need to click routine versus stat. And then it will go to the next one and next one based on the order you order them. So here I want the TCH serum, rheumatoid factor, ANA is here, ESR. That's why it's important to familiarize yourself with how the orders are made in this platform to save time. You don't have to go and search for how this thing is written in this uh, platform. So X-ray, there are multiple varieties of X-rays. We know the new one since this is the, the main one the patient is presenting with. So X-ray knee. You see the color will change and then you can confirm order. We wanted arthrocentesis. Here is it. And synovial analysis. And then you can order whatever additional analysis you think is important. So culture sensitivity, cell count, crystals, crystal is for gout, cell count is for checking the inflammatory arthritis, and the culture also is for the, the bacterial causes. Also the cell count can show you if it's bacterial versus inflammatory without bacteria, because the number will change. So you can order these. So here if you add extra thing, it's not gonna affect your score if it's not needed. But if you miss something, that will decrease your score. But ordering arthrocentesis, if it's not needed, that's gonna hurt your score because you uh, expose the patient to an invasive test if it's not needed. But if it's needed, you get the score. And missing it will, will decrease the points that you have for the case. So you click on confirm orders and they will be all orders. If you order the same thing twice, it will show you that. And you can see your all of your orders will be ordered at the same time. So although you took time to order these, we took around a minute. They're all ordered at the same time. So don't worry about the order in which you order the, the tests. And they will have different dates that they will be done. But uh, you can either, once you finish typing down your, your tests, you can either go to the clock here and click. There are four options. On is exactly the time. So you can find, let's say, the, the CT scan ends, or X-ray, we didn't order CT scan here. Let's say the uh, X-ray uh, is gets back on 11.45, so you can just go here, type day one, hour, 11, minutes, 45, and click OK, it will take you directly there. If you've ordered things before that, th they will be shown, the results of these tests will be shown before you reach the X-ray. Or in, so in, I wanna see the results after 20 minutes, after an hour, after two days. So you can check on the case after a certain amount of time. With the next available result, this is one I use a lot, if it's especially emergency case, or call me as needed. For our case, so this is, this advances the clock. For our case, this is, since this is outpatient, you can 
send the patient home. So you can go here to the location. You see there is the office, emergency department, ICU, the inpatient, and the home. So this is an outpatient case. The patient is not emergency case. So you can click on home, change location. Once you change the location, it will ask you to schedule an appointment. So you can schedule an appointment in how many days you want. So do you need the appointment in a week? So you can just click on eight and click OK. It will adjust to the hours of the office. So you click OK and confirm move. And then you'll start seeing the results of these tests you ordered. So this is the arthrosynthesis. It will ask you whenever you order a test, sometimes it asks you to continue or stop now. What's the purpose of this? The purpose is, let's say you find you ordered oxygen and the patient is hypoxemic. Do you do you, they want to know if you want to continue or stop and order oxygen, do something to resolve this case, uh, resolve this problem. Let's say ECG, you ordered ECG, ECG is normal, you continue with the case. Let's say the patient has ST elevation. Do you continue or you stop? give aspirin, give nitroglycerin, give something that will resolve the case. In our, in our test, there is nothing abnormal, so we continue. You can see here, hemo, uh, anemia, it's normal size. Nothing here in BMP. Uh, I didn't mention that there is a star usually next to the abnormal tests, so you don't have the to look at the normal values. The normal values will be here, but you don't have to check because, as I said, the time is limited. So there would be a star next to the ones that are abnormal. But the ones that are written, that are text, you have to read them. So for example, X-ray, they will not show you a star if it's abnormal. You have to read the impression. You don't have to read this. So you can just read the impression, moderate effusion, swelling, inflammatory arthritis. No, no organisms found. Continue. You can see that the glucose levels are low. This is liver function tests. Continue. This is the ESR. It's high, which is probably an inflammatory arthritis. Continue. So a C-reactive protein also high. This is cell count. So it shows you that it's an inflammatory arthritis, but it's not bacterial. No crystals, so probably not gout. Rheumatoid factor, it's very high. So now rheumatoid arthritis is more likely diagnosed than the other ones. We'll have a look also at the ANA. See here the glucose, the synovial fluid analysis. TCH was normal. ANA was negative. So probably this is rheumatoid arthritis, not SLE. And the CCP is strongly positive, which is very specific for RA. It's telling you that the patient is having difficulty and uh, pain within the wrist is giving you an update on the patient and the patient arrived for the appointment. Sometimes if you see that prompt that the patient is uh, still suffering from pain and you already have your diagnosis, you can bring them back to the, to the clinic. You could have ordered NSAIDs, for example, for the patient if you th you're thinking of uh, rheumatoid arthritis or you can, if it's a short time period and the patient is not suffering from this, you can order that with the next office visit. So. When the patient comes back for, for the visit, you can order interval follow-up, general, you don't have to order everything, or you can. So it's, there is no harm in that, but let's say in order here, the general and extremity. You see here the same findings, nothing have changed. Now we have a diagnosis in our, our mind. So I start by my orders. You can order ibuprofen, you can order methotrexate, we can order counseling for the patient, exercise, for example. You'll notice in New World, you, you can order counseling by itself here. It asks you to order specific counseling. So what are you trying to achieve from this counseling? Just counseling by itself will not be registered here in this platform. You can order rheumatology consult. You 
and you can order exercise physical occupational therapy So ibuprofen, confirm order, oral, methotrexate, confirm order, oral, counseling, exercise, rheumatology consult. Whenever you order a consult, you have to type Y, and you can type here rheumatoid arthritis. Since we ordered the exercise, we, we can we don't have to order it again through the exercise physical occupational therapy. Just want to see if the physical occupational therapy exists here. Yeah, you can order physical therapy. And now we can schedule again another appointment. So now we're at, we're at 16 minutes, so we have to do it fast so we can finish by 18 minutes. We can send the patient home and schedule another follow-up after four weeks, for example. So confirm move. Patient instructed about exercise, continue. Sometimes the consult tells you there is no specific recommendation, you can continue with the case. So continue. Patient referred for a specific therapy, for physical therapy, continue. Less severe, so you can see that you're on the right path now. It's four out of 10, continue. Patient, much improvement. So again, we're on the right path. And the case ended, probably because we hit the, the 18 minute limit. If the case continues, the, you can bring the patient back for, for the follow-up, examine them, and then order another follow-up in four weeks or eight weeks. And you'll see that the, the case is improving and uh, nothing uh, is changing and probably end after one or two follow-ups. If you missed anything, let's say you did not order the rheumatology, rheumatology consult here or you did not order the ibuprofen methotrexate, although you're supposed to order them during the 18 minutes you have, but let's say you missed that, you did not have enough time, you can order them here. Although that might be less points, I'm not sure and I don't, I'm not sure if anybody knows the exact uh, scoring of the exam and how each point is distributed but I think if even if you missed it on the 18 minutes you might get a little bit of score here if you did it in the order input, input at the end of the case so you can still mention here the methotrexate if you missed that rheumatology consult the exercise generally counseling could be put at the uh, order input I, I might order ESR just to see uh, the or rheumatoid factor as well just to monitor the patient how how these uh, factors are doing and I don't have anything else to order. So at the end, you if the time passes, the case will, will close by itself. If not, you if you're done, you can just click exit case and the software will thank you for taking care of the patient. This is what will happen in the real exam. It will tell you case complete and you click on end block. And you can go to the either next case or take a break. I just want to show you here quickly the explanation with that comes the feedback that comes from the software and from USMLE regarding this case specifically. So here it tells you about the case, what the physical exam findings is. One thing I wanted to highlight is this, this statement here. It tells you that the computer-based case simulation contains thousands of possible tests and treatment. Therefore, it's not feasible to list every action that might affect the examinee's score. And this is very important because if somebody tells you, I know how it's done, this is how you should score it, that's not correct. Because as this statement says, there are thousands of possible tests and treatment. And they will probably not follow every single step you do, but they have a list of criteria or list of exams or treatment options or diagnostic tests that if you order, you'll get scored. If you don't order, you will have... Uh, negative points on that will affect your score. So they probably have, and I'll show you now what, what I mean by that, but they probably have things that you have to order. They have a list of things that you can order and they have a list of things that you should not order because this will cause more harm to the patient than benefit. So it tells you it's not feasible. Even the, the software and the, the USMLE is telling you it's not feasible to list every single action. The description are meant to serve as an example that would add, subtract, or have no effect on an examiner's score for, the, for this case. So there, 
tell you here the physical exams that you should order and the one that you should not miss. Some of the diagnostic tests, for example, rheumatoid, rheumatoid fracture, CCP, CBC, synovial fluid studies, CRP, ESR, and they tell you a little bit of the differential and then the treatment options that you have to order. They say that optimal treatment would include a combination of either NSAIDs or corticosteroids with DMARD. So you have to order some kind of uh, disease modifying treatment such as methotrexate or uh, I think they mentioned that here. Let me see. Methotrexate or intanercep. So here are examples of additional tests that would be neither harmful or useful so this one if you order this to not affect your score but what will happen is that you'll waste time by ordering these especially in the 10 minute cases in the 20 minute cases there wouldn't be a problem but in 10 minute cases this, this would add a lot of time to your case so examples that would subject the patient to unnecessary discomfort or risk these the synovial biopsy and arthroscopy and uh, and this is a point uh, I might have missed that the cases run for days. As you saw, we ordered uh, some tests. We scheduled an appointment after two or three weeks. The case is, is happening in 18 minutes. So the simulated time of the case, which is days or weeks or months, is different from our time, which is the real time. You, as real time, have 18 minutes or, or eight minutes. But in the case, it might take a day. It might take an hour. It might take months. So... These two things are different. So that brings us to the end of this third part of this video. I'll do another video on how to approach the five other cases that were provided in the sample from the USMLE. But don't take these as this is what you should do in the exam. I did this video on this case presentation to show you one approach. This is not the ultimate or a perfect one. You might approach the same patient with ordering extra or less test than the one I did. Again, this is just uh, an example of how it, it's done. Don't take it as the 100% correct uh, example that you should follow in the real exam, but just how to deal with the platform, how to approach the patients, how to order these, these tests. That brings us to the end of this video today. If you find any value in this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel so you get notified whenever I post future videos related to the USMLE exams, residency or research. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below or feel free to reach out to me on Instagram or Twitter at Malka Asad or my Facebook page Malka Asad MD. Thank you everyone so much for watching and see you in future videos.